My name is Brad Gilmore, but you might know me by another name. Oh my God, you're my dreamboat for sure. <laughs> you might I'm know gonna, me. I'm gonna kill that board you have over there, man. It's gotta <laughs> go. Man, it's gotta you gotta go. show up. You gotta show up. I should at least be able to retaliate with my own board over here. You I have, have no idea board. what you got it. You know what? Frank isn't here, but Jim Sturger is. What's up, Jim? <laughs> Thank you very much, Brad. I appreciate the introduction. It's always good to see you, especially when we're getting to talk about fun schmodown stuff together. Man, you know, what a phenomenal first pay-per-view that we had last week. Last Friday, you saw final exam go out there and get the big W over D13. And of course, it wouldn't be a schmodown event without a little bit of controversy. Uh, but you always. know, of course we saw John always. the Outlaw Roca uh, come up just one question short in his attempt to get another title shot against big time Ethan Irwin. <laughs> What were your emotions going through that? I was like, there's no way it's going to happen again. There's no way that that it's going to, he's going to Jane Fonda himself again. I know. And I just remember sitting there going, it's not, no, it's not happening. Cause I'm watching in my car and I couldn't like, I couldn't get out of my car as I'm watching it. Cause I'm like, John, don't do this to me. I'm like, he's got to know this. And then when he did that, I was just sitting there going, oh my God. Oh my God, he has to have PTSD at this point from this. I, I know it, it was really difficult for me to watch too. As a, as an outlaw fan, the, the Sid, the Sid Pollock thing. Um, and it was like the same way. It was like, let me show you the, the board. Let me show you the like, table. Let me show you this. And it was literally like the face of a cat. I know. <laughs> I, know. I know it was, it was rough to see, but, um, I, I will say, what a phenomenal first way to start off this pay-per-view season in the movie trivia Schmodown because everyone was talking about it. We did a live after show, live rundown about it. I mean, the board was on fuego. What is that, Jim? That's Spanish for fire. I see I'm keeping the bit up. You see what I'm doing there? Like, it's a callback. If the, it doesn't matter. I but, love um, that you think you have to explain comedy <laughs> to me. <laughs> well, you know. You know. I have to uh, throw that in there. But I'm um, burn that board. I'm gonna burn. <laughs> I'm excited, Jim. <laughs> I'm excited for what we have coming up this week. We have that big inner geekdom main event. We're finally seeing, seeing a championship match in the digital era. We're mm -hmm. seeing the champion Kevin Smets, one of the one of the more dominant champions we've seen, going up against Chandru, the Chosen, and of course the undercard is going to be the Pride, which I really like the Pride, and they're going to have a tough battle against Final Exam. It all goes down live this Friday, August the seventh, five p.m. Pacific. Uh, so that's 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern. If y'all want to break down who's in mountain time, nobody knows. But that's going to be going down this Friday, and I'm really excited for that because final exam came through, man. What a battle that was with Deep 13. But Paul Oyama, the former singles champion, and Lon Harris, the delinquent, I like them together. Absolutely. And honestly, like I feel like we were just starting to see – how great of a player Oyama could be. And then obviously he fell off a little bit last year. It's spectacular, but I really liked the change in attitude. And I wonder how much, I wonder how much Harris had to do with that. Uh, I mean, Harris, maybe a little Winston, right? Uh, uh, Winston, of For course. For sure. Winston has right, 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 that right. infectious energy as a manager. And I feel like that's just part of the reason that his squad has done so well. Oh, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that Winston Marshall is still in the running for manager of the year. Um, and, and depending on what final exam can do against the pride, it, it, it might determine that because, again, then you have the pride. You have a team who Ben Goddard, rookie sensation, right? I think he came in. He was hyped up on SEN. People were like, well, yeah, but can he play? Can this guy actually get it done? Then he goes up in there against RB3, gets it done. He and final, not, excuse me, he and the pride have been phenomenal in their team outings. So, I'm excited about this matchup. What do you what do you think about the pride? What do you think about Ben Goddard and the Switchblade, Rachel Silverstreet? Listen, I feel like Silverstreet needs really come into her own in the last year as a competitor. She's no longer that rookie sensation, you know. She is a girl that's come in and absolutely made a name for herself against some big some big names, you know. Her match against Roka was probably one of my favorites. Uh and the fact that she's got such deep pull knowledge in certain categories, if she gets something like Kevin Smith or animation, it's over. It could be over. Yeah, absolutely. I think that Rachel also, I'm excited. We're going to have these teams on the show here in just a minute, but I'm excited to talk to her because um, my cohort, Frank Janish, has been a little hard on her uh, in recent months. And you know what? So, she has this gaggle 
I think is the appropriate term of support behind her. This group of people who believe in Rachel Silvestrini. And when you have that kind of support system behind you, you can do great things. I mean, look, I believe and in Ben's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, Ben's all right. He's all right. He, you know, he's a pretty man. But but I believe in James Harden, and I willed him to two victories over the weekend. And when you can will somebody like that to greatness, I think Rachel Silvestrini has a very – don't look at me like that. I think Rachel Silvestrini has a great shot. Her and her and Ben Goddard are really great together. I think this is going to be one of those – what are you looking at me like that I'm for? just laughing that you think that you willed Harden to do anything. <laughs> look, you don't know the relationship me and my boy James got, right? You know, I hit him in the DM, said, go get him, champ. Show him who you You're are. Like, You're I'm going to have – I'm going to send you over some Magic City wings. <laughs> some sweet Lou William <laughs> lemon pepper rings and you're going to get it popping. Um, and you know what? Maybe that's what Rachel and Ben need to do. Go, go to, to Magic NPL, City. I don't go think to Magic so. City, hit the buffet <laughs> and get ready for this match. Um, but you know, again, are, are, no, are no longer a thing. I hate to break that to you, Brad, with COVID. Like, well, the, you know. I don't know how we ever thought that were a good idea to begin with. Yeah, no, you know, I don't even want breakfast buffet is gross. Don't even get me started. But what do you think about about uh, Ben Goddard? Now, Ben Goddard, of course, like I said, very impressive early on, and then opts out of the singles tournament uh, to give some other members in his faction a sh some shine, including Rachel Silvestrini, James White, others. Um, what do you think about what he brings to this team with Rachel Silvestrini? I feel like Rachel has has long suffered, and same with Ben. They've never really been matched with someone that complements their abilities. And mm -hmm. so when I look at what their strengths and weaknesses are, they really seem to have a lot of their bases covered. And oh. so I I honestly wonder if that's going to be something that catches uh, Lon and Oyama at some point, final exam, because they have a lot of overlap. And so that's what I start to go, well, it just depends what ends up on that wheel. Yeah, I think they have overlap, but, but also the the age gap for Lon and and uh, Paul Oyama, I think, comes into play a lot. I, I want because Oyama oh knows a lot of the highlights in terms of stuff that's like pre nineteen nineties, uh, but he doesn't necessarily know those deep cuts that I feel like Lon Harris would have. Yeah, well, first of all, don't hate on the nineties. All right, well, you know, a lot of great things came out of that decade, uh, boat included. But I think <laughs> that, um, I, I agree with you. But I also, let's talk about a match that. I saw a little promo for it today, and it got me super hyped. And again, you talk about Rachel Silvestrini, big fan of Kevin I love Smith. Love a good promo package. Yeah, uh, we all love a good package. Uh, Rachel <laughs> Silvestrini, um, big Kevin Smith fan. Uh, the boat, Brad Gilmore, and Jen Serger, big Chris Jericho fans. They're going to lock horns coming up very soon at the end of the month, August the twenty seventh. But then the undercard, Jen Guy Bateman too. Last time we saw them as opponents, they were inside of the squared circle, the Booker T. World Gym Arena, so an apropos undercard for a huge main event. What do you expect that we see on August 27th? Well, I saw that a lot of the smack talk has already begun online between mm -hmm. Jericho and Kevin Smith. Plus, uh, I saw some tweets from Andrew Guy this morning where he's like, I'm so thrilled to be sharing this card with these legends and Ben Bateman's there also. And I was like, oh, oh, that hurts. That hurts so bad. Look, we just don't know what Andrew Guy is going to show up. And that's what I feel like is the biggest wild card in this whole thing. We don't know. Besides that, we don't know what Jericho's knowledge is in terms of breadth of movie knowledge. But I know that he's got very specific pop culture knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I feel like he could probably navigate his way through certain categories that you wouldn't think he has a strength if he uses multiple choice and things like that. But looking back over at the Andrew Guy Bateman match, I am really, really excited to see what Andrew Guy shows up. Because when he prepares... When he actually studies and, quite frankly, gives a whatever I'm allowed to say on this channel, whenever he cares, that's when he's the most dangerous. No, I, Everyone I agree. Everyone counted him out against Merle. Everyone counted him out against Riley because they thought the yep. Merle thing was just a fluke, and he showed everyone they were wrong. But then he let that get to the old noggin. He walked into Houston, Texas, thinking, I got this in the bag. I literally spoke to him the night before at Mark Ellis's comedy show, a lot of people from the Action Army were buying him a lot of brown liquid drinks. And I, he told me, I don't even need to study. I'm in his head. I got this in the bag. And then, you know, we saw what happened. So I hope that Andrew Guy is working alongside the Shmominati to make sure that he can go out there and be more competitive against Ben Bateman. Because remember, Ben, Ben was so confident in the match and had such a lead, he landed on Spinner's Choice and said, spin again. 
I mean, this is how confident Ben Bateman was at that time. So if a if a if a stronger, more prepared, well studied Andrew guy shows up, it's going to be a battle. If it's the same Andrew guy, I don't know. Here's the thing: the only person that can beat Ben Bateman is Ben Bateman. He gets in his own way a lot of the time because I feel like for the longest time he had that monkey on his back that he just could not make it to the big matches when they counted. He was always so close to getting that belt, but now like that is all out the window. He's had the belt. He knows what it feels like. He knows how to get there. And I feel like playing under those circumstances is what's going to make him cool, calm and collected against his former teammate, Andrew guy. That said, Andrew guy is incredibly good at getting in people's heads. And so if he knows how to needle Ben and let's face it, when you know someone that well and your best friends, your BFFs, you know, the stuff that cuts them to your core. And that's where things get interesting. Oh, you're absolutely right. But let's talk about, we talked about former teammates in opposition to one another, but I'm, I want to talk to some teams who are going to be competing this Friday. So we might as well bring in the, the most recently victorious final exam. That is, of course, primetime Paulo Yama and the delinquent Lon Harris. Um, and you know what? Let's make this interesting. Can we bring the pride on too? Let's have a little smack talk. Oh, God. Here's the switch. Oh, hey. Rachel oh, wow. and of course the handsome Ben Goddard, um, the bandit, of course. Uh, first off, prime time. We talked to you on Friday, but Lon, congratulations on your victory. How did you feel after a big win first pay-per-view? I mean, yeah, I, I feel good. How about you, Lon? Uh yeah, I felt it felt great to win. It felt even better to win without even really having to try very hard. So there was no effort put into your performance on Friday? No, that that's that's my personal guarantee. Uh, I'm not going to put forth any effort. So you know, a win is always appreciated when you don't have to try. It makes it, it makes it all the sweeter. Lon, and, you really broke it out this this past season, basically as the Orange Cassidy yeah. of the show. <laughs> broken out of a few places. Oh. <laughs> We don't the talk dog, about that other one. We don't talk the, about that the dog yeah. is constantly confused that Lon is not talking to to him. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps looking around. You know, I mean, we talk a lot, so it's natural. <laughs> He's like, "What? Well, what's going on?" All right. But what have we'll you guys? Here. What have you guys done? I know this is kind of unprecedented times we're in. What have you guys done to prepare for this upcoming match and to work together as a team? Just because, let's face it. Playing in the COVID era of Schmodown has a different set of challenges in terms of when you're sitting right next to the person and you're able to work together a little bit more. Well, we've tried to put in some effort, but uh, Lon has been uh, less than uh, you know willing to acquiesce, I guess, to the, the digital age. I'm just glad I can get him in for the matches. Like anything other than that, I can try, but I... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the way we've sort of divvied up uh, the stuff on the team is like Paul does a lot of studying and puts forth a lot of preparation and effort. And, uh, you know, I sort of look around for places where I can crash and leave my stuff. And so, you know, I think it's working out pretty well so far. Like I, all, I have a place for all my stuff. I mean, that's that's a step in the right direction. But but I want to get back to, to y'all in a second. But let's go over to the prod. The switchblade, Rachel Silvestrini, and the bandit Ben Goddard. Um, y'all, y'all early on had some great matches inside of the movie trivia showdown proper, the studio matches. Now you're going into the digital age. Rachel, first to you, how have you been preparing for this uh, venture into the virtual sphere in teams? Well, you never really stop studying. So uh, before all this started, we were planning. Oh, thanks, Boo. Uh, before we were, all this happened, we were still planning on having teams matches. Not you, Brad. Come on, baby. Um, and so it was just more of those like we just kind of stayed in that mentality. And, you know, we've been studying separately. We studied together. And um, I use a whole bunch of different places uh, and resources for questions and stuff. And uh, I think the more you do that, the easier that winning is going to be, which we've proven like, to do twice. <laughs> do you feel like you guys have finally started to get a little bit of the credibility you deserve? Just because I know, I know you felt kind of slighted at the beginning of the season, Rachel, because everyone was still looking at you as this rookie and Ben, same thing. Uh, do you guys feel like you've kind of started to prove the, I wouldn't call them haters. Like, do we have haters? But no, yeah. we, call, we call them Janishes. That's what we call oh, them. Yeah. Have you proven the yeah. Janishes wrong? <laughs> well, I don't want to give Frank too much credit by naming something after him, even if it yeah. is a hater. 
Um, no, you know, th this is going to be like a real first big matchup. Like people, you know, everyone loves the real rejects, but they're two and five, uh, you know, and uh, the Butcher Boys were also a rookie team. Uh, so, you know, everyone's saying this is our first big matchup and, you know, I'm sure we're we're two and oh and they're two and oh, but I'm sure they're going to be heavily favored. And that's how we like it. Like, I don't I don't want anyone that's going to root for us uh, that doesn't want to. And then once we win this match, I don't want your fandom after that, after we prove you wrong. So that's how it goes. I will take your apologies, though. That oh, sounds fun. I, I won't. She's a lot nicer than me. No, I just want to hear him. I won't accept him. I just want to hear him. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that they bring up a, a, a credible point there, Paul, um, that, you know, maybe some of the competition that they had faced earlier in the season, you know, rookie team, two and five, different kind of record. Y'all went up against Deep 13, who took out Tom and Paul. Um, Y'all had, had, no, had nothing but kind of more difficult matches. Do you think that that prepares you better than what the prod is prepared for? Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think that these guys go into every match, um, you know, with, with much less expectations. And I think proving, um, proving people wrong is kind of what they've done so far. So I think that to expect us to be more prepared than them, I think is a little bit naive. Um, these are two players really coming into their own this season. And like Ben's only lost one match, I think in his entire career so far played across like three different divisions. Like, you know, I don't know if I would say that we're more prepared or better prepared. Like, you know, we'll be as prepared as we can be. Um, and we'll do our part. At least I'll do mine. Uh, Lon will probably be there, hopefully. Um, right? Hopefully. Please. Yeah. Um, well, you know, look, it's really yeah. hard to show up late for a stream, okay? When One question. Uh, when is any of this happening? Uh, this yeah. all goes down August the 7th. That's okay. uh, this Friday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why have I not heard anything about this? Until when you now? say stream, Jen, you have to make sure it's not – you're not talking about Lon's tent where he lives next to a stream. He's talking That's about true. an internet oh. stream. Oh. Hey, yeah. it's a yes. free source of water. I don't know why you're trying to criticize <laughs> It's him. also He's very active on Friday. So it really picks oh. up steam. I'm it's sure. Not, <laughs> it doesn't but uh, no, I mean I will move some things around. I think I can probably pencil this in. Yeah, we can do this. Oh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah much appreciated. But guys, I want to. This is a question to both teams. I want to go first to the Pride um, Championship implications in this match. Of course, how motivated are y'all by Championship Gold in the Schmodown? Um, in the era of the faction, since since we have to be, I think, what will it be, five and zero oh before? Like by the time we get a title shot, I'm not looking for. I'm not looking to Shazam or who's the boss or to the winner of Corruption Founding Fathers. I'm looking at these two, uh, well, one gentleman, one uh, cute dog in the background of a homeless person that broke into an, a random apartment. Um, not you, Paul. Not you. Oh, so, yeah, got yeah, it, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm looking. I'm looking to to final exam. Uh, they're a good team, but I I know we can take them. And uh, once we get to Shazam, then you know we'll get there. But for now, focus one week at a time. Same question to you, Rachel, though. I mean, do you, are you looking forward to the championships? I mean, that would be a sense of validation, I would think, in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Oh, yeah. I mean, the belts are always that light at the end of the tunnel, the carrot at the end of the stick metaphor. Um, but you, you can't look beyond what's in front of you. And I don't discount either of these, but I am starting to see that, that weary look around Paul's eyes that I used to have when I had a teammate who just kind of didn't really care. So I'm kind of worried about Paul and how that's going to play out if uh, if all of this continues with Juan. So good luck, guys. Some slander toward Devon Stewart, uh, but Paul, why don't you respond to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. Ben says he's not looking ahead, but then like lists all the teams that they'll be playing if they beat us. So that's an interesting thing that happened. Yep. Um, I can no, reschedule, I, Paul. <laughs> you can be aware without caring. I got to be honest. I don't have time to reschedule. So I'm just trying to get my teammate into the match. Um, but no, that's I mean, we, we feel good. You know, again, all we can do is prepare on our end. I can't worry too much about what the other team's doing. If this was a contest of which team has the best hair, we would obviously be destroyed. But that's not what this is, luckily. Um, so yeah, I Wait, mean, again, I gotta go. I, I, I'm, I in the wrong, you, I'm in the wrong stream. Sorry. I think Jen and I would be in the running for the best hair team. I just want to throw that out, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of Jen, volume. Jen, I gotta it's say lock. Lock. this is, this is a full one. blow main. I haven't cut this since pre COVID. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but Jen, Jen, I'm gonna throw it to you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. No, I, <laughs> honestly, Oyama, I feel like I was one of the people that was the most critical of you in the league. Uh, last season and you and I have had a lot of conversations you know both on camera and off camera and I just wanted to know how much has working with Winston really affected your attitudes towards how you compare how you compete and how you handle yourself around everyone has it been being in a different team atmosphere like what has changed for Paulo Yama this season specifically 
I think it's a combination of those things. I think that the change of scenery sort of aligning with that sort of shift in character has sort of helped it feel much more natural. It's helped the transition. It doesn't feel jarring. You know, if I were still with Kaiser, who knows if that would be as easy to naturally have happened, you know? Um, but I think especially too, like Lon's attitude kind of helps me chill out a little bit and relax and remember. When you're around someone that cares fun. so little, it's got to rub off, yeah. right? You're like, yeah. who cares if Do we it. win? Yeah, to an extent. I mean, I still, I still care. But uh, hopefully, Lon cares somewhat. I don't know. No, I mean, um, maybe this is all just a carefully calculated strategy. We'll go with that. <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll we'll run with that. Can you yeah. spell any of the words you just said, Lon? Sure. M A B Y E. Maybe. <laughs> Done. Nailed it. Ten points. Uh, In the wheel. Gotta love that. But what's what's the, what's been the strategy like? I mean, for for the pride, have y'all been working a lot with Kate? What what have what have y'all been looking at that that final exam does that you're hoping to kind of counteract them with with some strategy? Well, it's tough since they they changed the the rules about uh, you know I was we were really strategizing about certain you know inner geekdom slices and stuff like that, and I was wondering because you know Paul was also in the tournament with me. Uh, so I know like that wasn't as big of an advantage, but then, you know, they changed that rule saying that you can't have like a Harry Potter, Middle Earth, uh, Star Wars slice. It's just a mixed bag inner geekdom slice now. So we're changing some things up with that. Uh, you know what? These are two. I'm talking about Paul and the dog behind lawn two very uh, knowledgeable players that we're going to be facing. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a fun time. And, you know, Getting opponent's choice last time and working our way through that that tough 80s category last time was a good, good test, and I liked it. Yeah, and both Ben and I have very different um, ways in which we come at studying, so I think that when we've talked our way through it, um, like I've seen his way of studying, he's seen my way of studying, and it just kind of really complements and just kind of uh, makes it so much easier to study. I mean, these two guys are really good, but be honest everybody has holes and uh, all you gotta do is find them and exploit them so it's gonna be crazy. yeah universal Phrasing. soldier Phrasing. Phrasing. oh oh man the Phrasing. shots continue between these two teams i have a feeling jen the smack talk is going to be worth the price of admission alone i have to say i'm a little concerned <laughs> i don't want anyone exploiting my holes i'm just putting that out there <laughs> Take me off camera. I have to recover. <laughs> that's, that's not it's the first of the month, Lon. You got to pay rent somehow. <laughs> well, I think there's no better time than to leave it right there. Uh, <laughs> the teams will be battling in the virtual movie trivia showdown this Friday, August the 7th, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Wait, this Seven. Friday? That, this Friday, Lon. <laughs> no, Lon, next Friday. First They're I'm hearing about it. Jeez. They're the undercard match for our big inner geekdom championship, Smets versus Chandru the Chosen. It goes down this Friday again. Uh, the Pride, final exam. Good luck to you both. We'll all be watching. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Good luck, thank guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Switchblade. I had his oh. like that. What do you think, man? Ben Goddard seems to be like kind of shot out of a cannon. I've never seen him so vicious. Really? He's you vicious. haven't been. You must not be paying attention. He's like. Pay attention, but he's, he's like. He's like that. Like that girlfriend that's just passive aggressively making comments at you because she's mad that you didn't do something for her. I feel like that's Ben all the time. Just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> he just has like that huge chip on his shoulder from not getting the recognition that he deserves, and I get it. Because like like Oyama pointed out, he's got a phenomenal record in the Schmodown uh, across all platforms. And so it's like, <sighs> what does the guy have to do to get some recognition besides, you oh, know, no. scream, we're heels? Well, we're heels. I, that's, <laughs> we, did we ever make that shirt? Someone needs to make that shirt, please. Right? What a missed opportunity. Yeah, we definitely need to make that shirt. But we have the main event coming up, of course, the Inner Geekdom Championship match. Um Big, big match. It's our first championship match in the virtual sphere. And I think that we should bring on some people who are the managerial representation, the advocates for our two contenders, our champion and contender. And let's bring in the first one now because this guy always has a lot to say. He's got a sweet bandana collection. And uh, what he smells like is always left up to the imagination. He is the leader of the dungeon, John Kaiser. Kaiser, what's going on, my brother? Hello, Brad. Ben. Hello. They gave you your job back? I thought you were gone. What happened? Uh, no, no, no. I'm still here. Why do you look like you're in a 
one of those police interrogation videos or like where they're interviewing a witness. <laughs> like we can't see your face at all. And that's, that's near, not here nor there. Um, I'm in Las Vegas. I'm buying a hotel. All right. I'm sorry. Well, what? Do you hear me? Okay. Did are you buying not, the you third circus me? building? What are you doing? <laughs> no, my business partner, Patrick Mahomes and I are buying a hotel. Patty M. Okay. Mm. Well, you know what? You're, you're a man in many businesses or as a fortune teller at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo told me one time, I'm a man who has my finger in many pies, but why don't we talk about this Friday's match? You have your guy. Well, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, you have your guy. I just, Kevin. I just wanted to promote something. We're opening up the Dungeon Hotel. We're going to have smash slots, zippers, old time Italian sausage. Parker's doing a magic show. I'm buying one of the old dumps here. <laughs> Well, he's already got the outfit, the so let's do this. <laughs> well, you know what? You've already, I, I you've already just wanted to out. promote the dungeon, the dungeon Hotel and Casino, which will be coming in 2021. Okay, maybe it will take the place of the Hooters Hotel and Casino that is <laughs> uh, still <laughs> ravaged over there in Las Vegas, Nevada. But look, I want to talk about Friday, Friday's match. It's huge. It's, it's your guy, the, the person that you built your entire franchise on. You want to talk about Patrick Mahomes for the Kansas City Chiefs. You built your franchise on Kevin Smets. He went out there at the biggest event in the Schmodown's history, the Spectacular Four, beat one of the legends of the game for that championship, but has not been seen since. Does he still have what it takes to go out there and get the job done against Chandru in this pay-per-view match? You know, you're talking about the greatest player in the history of the inner geekdom, and you're talking about him like, like ring rust is a thing. <clears throat> this is a guy who knocked out the guy who had the belt before him. That's no easy task. So if you don't think he's itching to play, I mean, he hasn't seen daylight in two months, and that's not just because of you know, what's going on in the country. It's because we haven't looked outside. He's, he's, behind, he's been behind a steel door. All he is, he, you know, he's watched the Rathacon backwards. He can pretty much, he can do the whole movie in reverse. He can play all the characters. Sometimes I'll go in, I'll play a Borg and take it easy on him. But this kid couldn't be more ready to take uh, Twinkle Toes Channy to the mat, send that kid back to uh, play school where he belongs. It's desert. He now let's face up. it. Ooh, I'm sorry. Screwed up my voice, Jen. I'm sorry. Like, oh, I, sure, I got all this yeah. air conditioning. There's all this air conditioning. And then in the desert heat, it's just it's making my mind a little fuzzy. So you bring up an excellent point, obviously. We haven't seen Smets in a long time, so you're not concerned the least bit that there's going to be ring rust at all? I mean, come on. this is a, He hasn't really had a chance to practice in this format. It feels different, honestly. Like the stakes might necessarily not feel as high, but you're also, it's a little, for someone that's so used to competing in big stages like Smets is, you're not concerned that playing under these circumstances is going to bother him at all? <clears throat> We've been wanting a piece of this kid since the last time that they went in. I mean, everyone knows that Chandru is, the, is probably the second best player in the inner geekdom right now. I think that's fact. Now, the fact that he's going up against the Smashers is another story. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is this. Nobody wants to play more than Kevin Smets. And if you don't think he's not playing every other day against his training partner, Robert Parker, then you're insane. Because when you've got a training partner, like when Kevin Smith says Robert Parker and Robert Parker says Kevin Smith, they're playing each other every other day. You couldn't ask for something better. So, it's, so we play matches every week. This is going to be just against someone, some dicky do and, and, his, and his third manager. He needs to get some sleep. He does 65 shows. I, I don't think the kids Winston sleeps. I don't know how he has time to train his guys. He's on everybody's show. He's all over the place. Uh, yeah, we might be having him on this show as well. But 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 when you talk about Chandra, I don't know why the disrespect in the tone, because in their first encounter, Chandra was right there. He was knocking on the door. He was one question away, really, from beating Kevin Smets. I mean, I, if I were you, I'd be a little bit concerned. I wouldn't be as confident as you seem to be. Yeah, well, the thing is this. We got a belt. And when we won that belt, we decided we were never going to give it up, no matter who got in our way. And, you know, I think the six knockouts prove it. I mean, let's face the facts. I mean, you guys saw uh, Smets's, uh exhibition match, the Champions of Champions. How did how, how Russ look in that match against the greatest players in the world? He looked pretty Not, good. I didn't, I didn't see any ring rust. I don't know if you did. That so, was even look, an inner geek to match. 
I know everybody likes to discount Chandra because he hasn't really been in those big events yet. And he hasn't really had a chance to be in this kind of limelight. But he's really been patiently waiting for his turn. Uh, that said, I sat next to him. And I tell this story all the time because I, I think it goes... It goes unnoticed a lot. I was sitting next to him at the Inner Geekdom match at last year's Comic-Con. And he was literally shouting out answers under his breath and like shouting for things to be challenged that like were technicality challenges. But you never know. He could have made a compelling enough argument that they could have absolutely taken them. And so it's like, I feel like Chandru not only has a lot of the answers, he knows how to play the game really well. And let's face it, he's obnoxious. Ch 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 Andrew? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he's a lunatic. <laughs> uh, he should be locked up in an asylum somewhere. I mean, he's running around. He's smiling like like life is a Colgate commercial 24 hours a day. And then, and then he's whispering, you know, weird things in your ear when you're walking by. I'm, I was walking to the bathroom and he whispered, he said, snake juice. I said, what the hell does that even mean? And so the kid is third. Uh, someone should lock him up. He should be probably sleeps in a room with padded walls. I really don't know what to say. He's all, I don't know why he's dancing all the time. Life isn't that that fun and good that you got to be dancing all the time. But I'll tell you what, Smasher's going to tap dance on him when, when, when it comes time to play this match. That's damn sure. Um, you know, Kaiser, this season, you, you, you took the you took the Billy Bean. You took the Daryl Morey. You took the Moneyball approach and when it came to drafting this season for your faction, the dungeon, the IG stuff, it, it hasn't worked out as I guess to perfection as you may have wanted it. So how important is it for you and your faction to go out here and get this championship victory? Well, it's the ultimate. And I, and I know we're going to do well in the singles term. And I don't have a, any doubt in my mind that my players are coming to play. <clears throat> but the truth of the matter is we have a championship belt. Oh, we don't, and we don't expect to lose that championship. What 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 what, what was that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To anybody. Sorry. In this what what were you saying? Because black man's here. Can I help you? Can I help you, sir? I actually do have something to say to you. Go ahead. What's you know, up? ever since ever since Chandru joined up with you, uh -huh. he seems a lot happier. Yeah. Like he's always smiling, and he's running around like you know it's a Skittles commercial. And let me tell you why he's so happy. It's because he feels sick with you. Like his mama kangaroo hopping around in your pouch with this little ball. And yes, he thinks he's safe. Let me tell you something. When you play us, there is no shelter from the dungeon. Because we're going to kick the crap out of you and Chandru. And it's going to be the most disgusting thing that's ever happened in your entire career and Chandru's entire career. I have to ask the question, obviously. If Chandru wins this match, Winston, does that potentially skyrocket you to solidifying your position as manager of the year? I mean, I would assume so. I, I don't know. That's up to the, that's up to the people, but I'm sorry. I didn't hear anything Kaiser said. You know, I, I pulled a get out and pulled cotton out of my ear. So I couldn't hear his dribble. Uh, here's the thing. I am very aware of the fact of what the dungeon has done in the past. I, you made a champion out of Smets. You made a champion out of Paulo Yama. There's a reason why I wanted Paul on my squad. And he has been the essentially, the forefront of the squad in that regard is because I have seen the, the talent that you cultivated and what they've done. But guess what? Guess what? Eventually, everybody escapes from dungeons. There's a reason why the end of Dungeons and Dragons, when you finish a campaign, you get out, you take all the boot, you literally rob all the gold out of the dungeon and you bounce. That is the objective of the game. And guess what we're here to do? We're here to rob you of your gold and bounce. Any, any right. response to that, Kaiser? You know, the greatest thing Eric Zipper ever did in his career was join the dungeon. The second greatest thing he ever did was kick you to the curb because your whole squad is fools and we're going to expose you when you play when you play Smets on the his, Andrew's is over. Twinkle Toes is dancing back home in the quarantine to practice for 2021. First of all, welcome to the Swagathon, baby. Swagathon 2020 is what's about to happen on Friday. So I hope you are ready to just get swagged and drip dripped all over the entire time. That's the first thing. The second thing is I'm glad Eric came to the curb so he can go and fail in the Inner Geekdom tournament. So he can go and fail to Stacey Howard. So he can continue to fail and see where the real loser is. Not me. I found my real calling and look what happened. We're sitting nice and cushy up near the front if Friday goes how we plan on it to go, and it will, 
we take first place. So Eric, what, what has he really done in that time since he decided to betray me? That's the first thing. And the second thing, Kaiser roll. All right, here's the thing that I'm going to tell you right now. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm watching my carbs. So I've had just about enough out of you. I ain't worried about your tired Mickey butt behind because I realize I can't swear on here. I almost did it, but I stopped myself. <laughs> I, am, I am tired of it, all right? I'm about to replace your Kaiser roll behind with a lettuce wrap, and we about to shed all these at this extra weight. That's what I'm telling you right now. All right. On that note, uh, best of luck to you guys. I think we should bring on their opponents. I think we should bring on their their uh their team members? Uh, yeah, we go that. 15 more minutes. We don't. Okay. <laughs> thank we'll you. Before, before Whoever's we bring them running on. the board, thank you so much. <laughs> before oh. we bring them on, you know, of course, another legendary uh, appearance by, what do you say his name was? Black Man? Black Man. Is that what he said? Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and John Kaiser, who um, apparently is in bu- business with Patrick Mahomes. Before we bring on uh, our main I'm just grateful team. Winston had a shirt on this time. I don't know if I'm grateful. You know what I mean? Like I feel like it bring it brought something different to him. You know what I mean? I like I like what he was putting down. But I I, I say I want to talk real quick. Um, if you have, if you're watching this video and you have not gone over to the Schmodown Quick Clips channel, uh, definitely go do that and hit the subscribe button. As a hardcore fan myself, this thing is awesome, Jen. It, it reminds me of all the great moments that made me a fan. You can go watch classic moments, classic matches, classic promo packages by Nerd Chronic himself. And also, if you were interested in that inner geekdom final that just went down and you wanted to hear myself and Frank Janish's uh, 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 opinion on what we saw and our reaction to that main event, it's exclusively over there on the Clips channel. And one more thing, Jen, if we get to 10K, 10k 10,000 subscribers by the end of the month of that channel the outlaw documentary yes the nice. John Roca documentary will be released on that channel for free so go over it's just you literally click a button and it hits subscribe that's I've all heard phenomenal doing. things about that documentary it's like his last ride yeah no it's it's really awesome and and uh, the way that Frank and Nerd Chronic put it together it kind of all centers around uh the free for all the first live free for all in front of an audience and the way that they set it up, it's really cool. Like, I'm not even just hyping it up as a schmodown pundit of any kind. The documentary got me hype. And so we're at 6,000. We only need 4,000 more people. That's all. 4,000. I'm sure the millions and millions of schmodown fans out there want to go subscribe to the channel right now. Do it for the boat. Do it for Jen slash Jess. Do it now. I do it for you. And look, the greatest thing about this channel is I get asked all the time if you could, and I see it in the Facebook group all the time, if you could recommend matches for people to watch that are new to the show, that have never seen the Schmodown before, what matches would have them hooked? What would make them become a fan? And this channel is all about that. Absolutely. So go over to it right now. This is the Schmodown Quick Clips channel. Uh, just go over and search it. It's hard to say, but it's easy to search. So go over there and do it and subscribe <laughs> right now. Quick Clips. Quick clip, quick clips. We have to do it real quick. But right now, Jen, I think it's the time. There's no time like the present, as they say. Big match <sighs> again going down. Inner geekdom <sighs> this Friday, August the 7th. Chandru, the chosen, challenges the smasher, Kevin Smets. And we welcome them on the show right now. There is the smasher, and there is Chandru, the chosen. Oh, look at Chandru. No, no haircut, it looks like, my brother. <laughs> Good. No, my hair's still long. Hey, Brad. Hey, Jen. Good to see you again. Great to see hey, you. Smasher. Hey, Smasher. Hey, first of all, before I get to dancing dicky do over there, I got something to say to you, Brad Gilmore. All right? The last few months, you've been running the Smasher's name down. You've been on the rundown, running my name through the mud, and I've had, I've been, I haven't had a chance to defend myself. Well, here I am, pal. The bill comes due because you've been hiding. You've been hiding behind a Patreon tier. There's a reason you've been doing that and running my name down every week on the rundown where I couldn't defend myself. And you know why? It's because I embarrassed you. You know it. I know it. The Patreon fans know it. And if you want to know anything, if you don't have Patreon and you want to look into it, look at the end of April, become a Patreon, and you can figure it out. Well, the bill comes due, Brad. Keep my name out of your mouth. The only reason I'm doing this show right now is because Jen is the best at what she does. She's the best in this industry. I respect her more than anyone in this industry because she doesn't let her personal feelings get in the way, her bent ego. She just runs a show right down the middle. So with that, I'm done talking to you. I'll talk to Jen, and I'll talk to this dancing whoa, dickie. Whoa, Let's get whoa, this going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, man, look, I know we have all fun and stuff on the rundown, but, you know, just relax. It's all fun and games. So I don't mean anything personal. I hope you didn't take it that have way. Have you guys considered couples therapy? 
I, I, you know, I didn't know there was an issue. To be honest with you, this is the first that I'm hearing about. Well, it. That's hey. what you do, Brad. You go on the you go on the rundown. You guys are in the safety of the show, and you run down a lot of competitors, a lot of my faction mates, a lot of other players too. They don't get a chance to defend themselves. So I wanted to go on the show and let you know that we hear it, and we're not going to let it stand, man. That's it. That's all I got to say about that. Okay. Hey, man. All right. Uh, now that that business is handled for that's now. Until, like I said, you guys schedule that with your therapist. Um, look it up match. on it. Yeah. Hey, hey, man. Hey, look, look, look. I didn't. Obviously, I didn't ever mean any, any foul, uh, any foul play to you or any disrespect. Obviously, you know, you're you're the man. Okay, you're the champion. I, I, you know, I thought we were having fun. So, my bad. Like I apologize. I, you know, I'm I'm not here. We we, we can do this later. We can do it later. Um, but Jen, I, we have a pay per view this this Saturday, the seventh. Uh, I mean, excuse me, this Friday, the seventh. Mm -hmm. Chandru sitting here smiling. Chandru, how how do you feel going into this? I'm like really excited to play Smash play this match again. Like, oh, we had a great match last season, and this one is going to be my biggest challenge yet. Even though we've played each other before, because he's even stronger than he's been last season. But so have I. I've like prepared uh, a lot since. Uh, my last match, even like where I had a flawless, flawless game, and uh, this this COVID break, being on the bench for almost like six months, has only like increased uh, my training time and like leveled the playing field almost, where both of us could be even in this, both of both of us could be like in the same preparation uh, level. And uh, I'm excited to play play this match again, man. And most of all, I'm just like really excited to see the smasher on stage like in a real regulation game again like because the last time we saw him play in, a, in an ig match was like last spectacular so i'm just i'm just like so honored to be in the same stage across from him you know like it's 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 a it's a miracle to watch shandra you mentioned the last time that you two played each other did you learn anything from that encounter that you've helped take into preparing for this match oh uh, yeah i've learned a lot like um uh, definitely Think my way through. I I I know Kevin. You learned how to lose. Great. You learned how to lose. <laughs> like you did uh, at the collision against Mike. I mean, I've learned a lot. Uh, uh, like you know, not to make verbal flubs. Uh, think my answer through, and uh, just like just like Kevin learned uh, with his don't tell Peter, I learned with my Ariana moment, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, so and I've also learned to lean on my managers and like use my challenges strategically. And people have told me like I missed a challenge on a challenge against Smasher because like I was more concerned with being likable at that moment, and I didn't want to like nitpick certain pronunciations like other people did. So uh, so um, I didn't want to be. Uh, but I've learned my lessons. I uh, I'm leaning more on my managers for uh, strategy like um in things like that too and and i'm also training more and more and yeah i've learned my lesson on watching the phantom as well and smets what have you learned from your last meeting um with chan you know honestly i'm just looking forward to getting back in and scrapping everybody knows when we first uh, i was gonna have mara in in january we we're gonna have that match and our big thing was we wanted to be fighting champions we wanted to go in there and i i pitched to christian I said, let me defend once a month. Like, let me be a fighting champion. Let me see. So going from that to now it's been eight months, you know, like when people talk about how many days I've been champion, I, I don't count that. That doesn't matter to me. In fact, you know, this is not, uh, this is not something, it's something I earned, but it's not a subscription. Like it's a subscription. I got to keep repaying the bill. Right. So uh, for me, uh, since Chandru, like, you know, honestly, it's for me, every opportunity being taken away to compete has, has gotten me more hungry. Uh, and I feel like that level of that chip on my shoulder too, you know, you're going through a tournament where, you know, all these other players are doing so well and they're running the table and they're, and they're showing their prowess. And it's like, you know, we, we all have egos in the Shimoda and we wouldn't be in it if we weren't. It's like, it's like, I have that chip on my shoulder. Like I did before David Moore, where it's like, I want to show everybody that, Hey, I'm still here. The smashers here. No one's talking about me, but, and you know, the same for Chandra. Like I honestly, the worst thing that could have happened to Chandra was he, that he keeps getting better and better. And I know it, I see it. He, he is following the same recipe that I was basically from getting better from the fan league auditions to David Moore, to Jay, to Hector, to, like he keeps getting better. And then he has that loss. He's learning from that loss. And so I'm not taking him lightly. Look, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of some of the things he does and that's in front of the camera and even behind the camera and everybody knows what I'm talking about. And another thing I'm not a fan of is his path, okay? You have Chance Ellison who just beat Parker Oyama, Barbarian and Kalinowski to get to a title match. What well, now Chandru, I'm not discounting how good you are, but what was your path? You beat Hitman Hannah, 
Then you lost to me. Then you beat Hitman Hannah again. That's your path, and you get a title match. You get a title match from that math. So for me, you're just a wolf in a onesie. You're always getting your way. And, uh, you know, if you're lucky that Kalinowski didn't stomp you when he had a chance. And so now you're, you're going to get a smash from me on Friday. Smets, uh, just to follow up with you on that. Yeah. The inner geekdom belt has been kind of notoriously hard to defend in the last couple of years. It's not like when the inner geekdom division was first started, when you would have these long reigning champions. It's like the belt's kind of been passed around between Kalinowski and Rachel Cushing, arguably two of the best players in the game, plus Jason Inman. And it's like, why do you think that the inner geekdom division has gotten so much more challenging throughout these years? Wow, it's just it's a credit to everybody. It's a credit to it's a credit to Kalinowski and Rachel who bla blazed the way. Also, Jason Inman had an amazing uh, accuracy rating, um, and those were people that I looked up to. And so when I didn't get into the audition, um, even though I had an average audition, like my score was average in that first round, I was like, well, then apparently I need to be even better. And so I pushed that study and I pushed that level to where I can get. And it makes me excited, by the way, like I'm talking to Christian, like how excited I am that there's this new level of competitor that's out there that I get to mix up with, whether it's Alex Damon, whether it's a rejuvenated Kalinowski, Lord knows I want that rubber match, whether it's Andrew, like honestly, uh, I hope that the Chandra match goes down to the wire. I want a good competitive match because, you know, you know, going through my my record is impressive as far as the knockouts go. Uh, but I'm not going to lie that some of those competitors have just debuckled and they got knocked out. I love having a scrap. Chandra and I last time went down to the wire. People talk about how, oh, if I didn't win that challenge or if it, it didn't go the other way, he would have won. That's not the case. In any way, if you do the math, you could ask Frankie numbers. It would have gone down to overtime. I know I would have outlasted him in overtime, but that would have been a sight to see. So as far as I'm just listen, I love this game. Um, you know, I get, I get heated as you can see when I first got on the show, but I love this game. I had a great time on those exhibition matches and, you know, doing the champion to champions match, uh, staring at Roka across the board and then being in the final question against Dan Merle, like no disrespect to Chandru, but like that was intimidating. And Chandru, like for you, like this Friday, like I'm bringing everything I have because you've gotten better and better. And I respect that. I don't respect you as a person, the way you handle yourself behind the scenes where you've hurt dear friends of mine that maybe not even my friends, people know what I'm talking about. The way you handle yourself in your matches, you try any of that nonsense this Friday, you're going to see what happens. But as fact is you are going to be, it's going to be a show, a sight to see. I know we're going to, we're going to do battle and I missed the game and I'm looking forward to taking it to you, but make no mistake, Chandru, your runs up, man, your long path to the title, beating Hannah, losing to me, Beating Hannah again, it's going to all end this Friday. There's no Cinderella story for you. Swag's getting sent home. You can count on that. Uh, Chandra, I, I want to, before you re respond, I, I did want to ask you, you know, you talk about preparation leading up to this match. Smets has been in this position before, uh, maybe not defending a championship, but battling for one in a five-round format. You haven't. How do you yeah. feel about being in this five-round format? format in a virtual world with a new speed round are you are you do you feel prepared enough for this friday i'm definitely taking pointers from like my faction mates who've been in five rounders before both the old ones as well as like the new new digital format i know ace was also ace also really did well in his five round format like end up ended up winning the match so i've been taking pointers from uh paul uh, oyama from his last, last year last season's experience and, and from ace as well and yeah winston's been coaching me through all of this uh, too and uh, just I feel like my path has been like mirroring Kevin Smith's path a little bit uh, because he lost his number one contender match against Mike and then had a path uh, had a path back to the championship belt and uh, you know knocked him down and uh, who did I lose my number one contender match against uh, to Kevin Smith and now I have a title match a title a rematch for the title against him so we'll see if I can recreate history and mirror Smets in the same way and like actually defeat him and take the belt from him because his championship run, his six and one run is the most overrated thing I've ever seen in this division. He's who has he beaten? Like you want to talk. To I, beat you, I beat you, pal. I beat you. I'm overrated. Yeah, other, I beat you. Other than, beat other, than the match, other than the match against me, who have you beaten? You've Hector beaten Navarro, former champion who defended their, the title. Been, you don't know anything about the history of the you're talking about on, on the way on their way out of the league. You've beaten. You have no respect. You have no respect for the people in this league, there, inside right. the camera and outside the camera, man. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You 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 keep call, talking about your six wins and five knockouts. Six wins and five knockouts. You know why it isn't six knockouts, Smasher? Because of me. Are you drunk? I'm the person who almost 
made you cry not happy tears but sad tears who, who almost retired you last season and after i win this match in this friday the only matches you're going to be playing this season are more exhibition matches because that's what whoa. you were whoa whoa <laughs> Hold on now. Uh, you hear me? You're overrated. We're almost out of time. We can't overrated. be starting this. Smets, uh, I guess I'll give you the final word here on, on what Chandru just said and, and going into this match on Friday. I have nothing to prove to Chandru. The whole overrated thing. I mean, I got the belt. That's all I got. Hey, Chandru, you want to you want to prove that I'm overrated? Come see me on Friday, buddy. We got yeah, a date I'm with Destiny. You, we got a date with Destiny, buddy. Yes, good to see you. Like, I'm sure you'll bring your best. Bye. All right. Well, that's going down this Friday. Of course, the champion, Kevin, the Smasher Smets, defending against Chandru, the Chosen, in that big five-round spectacular going down on Friday. Um, Chandru has uh, mastered something that I feel like I, – I felt like I was the only person that had really been good at that, and that is saying the most cutting, mean things possible while having the biggest smile on your face. Like, it makes it any worse – like, it makes it any better, what you're I, saying? Right, right. No, I, I – I, I like Chandra's energy. I got to say, I like his energy. Not, not, I'm not a huge fan of Smets's energy. I'll be honest with you. I was a little rattled by that. I wasn't expecting Chandra that. Chandra is like me when I accidentally take two of my thyroid medication, okay? <laughs> like, it's on a different <laughs> level of activation. We should just bottle it like an energy drink. We should do that. We should do it. But who you got? I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you had to make a prediction, uh, Kevin the Smasher Smets, defending against Chandru. You brought it up. Defending that championship has been hard. You know, Rachel didn't do it. Mike didn't do it. Uh, do you think Kevin is the one who can go out there and get it done? I have the utmost faith in Kevin Smith's ability to defend this belt. And I feel like it's been a while since we've had a champion that has been able to hang on to it and become the face again of the inner geekdom for, for more than one title defense. Uh, I believe this will be a long reign for Kevin Smith's if he can just keep his head in the game this Friday. Well, we're going to see. I'm, I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to talk about Kevin Smith ever, <laughs> ever again. But, You're uh, going to need a new nose the next time he sees I you. Know, you know I that, know. right? I know. You I'm better hope this whole COVID thing lasts way longer because they were going to do this match in Houston. Now I'm happy that they didn't. Now I'm, I'm, I'm real, <laughs> I need to hit Kevin up. Baby, you be getting a new face. <laughs> I know. For real, man. Wow. Um, Hey, if we can go through all the graphics here one more time, I want to just remind everybody what we have coming up. Of course, this Friday is August the 7th, 5 p.m. Pacific time, the Pride versus Final Exam, and Smets versus Chandru, the Chosen for the Inner Geekdom Championship of the World. Also, we still have that big 36-person tournament going on. The singles tournament is underway. Four matches a week. That begins August the 10th, so that is next Monday, the tournament kicks off officially, and then at the end of this month, August the 27th, the big clash of titans, the battle of legends goes down. <laughs> Chris Jericho, the Ayatollah of rock and roller, the demo god, Jen. He's the demo god. I can't well, believe we're giving that away for free. I know, going up against Kevin, not Smet, but Kevin Smith, um, a man whose name is rings rings in the halls of the movie world. And then, of course, Guy versus Bateman. He too. has his own slice. I know. If Kevin Smith gets his own slice. Oh, my God, that'd be so Smith. amazing. He's got to put that on the wheel, right? Uh, he's got what? Strategy, man. Uh, hopefully, Koi is coaching him up. Hopefully, Roxy is coaching Chris Jericho up because there's a lot of great things going on. But, Jen, I'm going to give you the final word. Where can people find you and follow you and all that great stuff? At Jennifer Sturger, guys. And please check out all the work that I'm doing right now with All Elite Wrestling on their YouTube page. Uh, like and subscribe. And then, if you can also tune into my podcast that I host with my husband, Swings and Mrs. MRS. Get it? That's the joke. We're married. Uh, so, check out that podcast as well. You don't have to love sports to love it. If you enjoy this kind of silliness you're in the right place absolutely and check out right now actually about five minutes i'll be going live on the reality of wrestling channel with my man booker t we're going to talk about um his tales from the tna crypt so i'm excited oh. to get into that uh bit of tea he's going to be spilling the tea booker t spills the tea and all that great stuff but check out again this friday august 7th that's the big show that we're all going to be tuned into and we're going to be live talking about it afterwards so make sure you check that out for jen sturger my name is brad gilmore the boat oh my god you're my dream boat for sure and we'll see you next time <laughs>